I want to speak briefly on a topic that seemed to be of concern to many women and even men, surprisingly. And that is men having rights over the woman's body. Now, of course, I'm going to the scripture on this topic. When women say men cannot tell them what to do with their body, men have no rights to tell a woman what to do with their body when it comes to abortion. There's a lot of women up there, especially women that's within the church, women that say that they love God, women that say that they believe in God, and women that believe that they follow the scriptures. But yet they are out of order by much of what they claim to believe in or stand for. Now, do men have the right to tell women what to do with their body, especially when it comes to abortion? Do men really have any rights when it comes to women? Now, I will be doing another video on what is a woman, so stay tuned for that video. But can a man tell a woman what to do with her body? What I find to be quite interesting is that there are so many women and men that's out there protesting, saying how men have no rights over a woman's body. A man cannot tell a woman what to do with her body, but yet the minute you start saying, well, men should not have to pay child support for a child that he have no say in. Then the whole conversation changes. They get an entirely different attitude when you start talking about taking away the money. Because in my opinion, child support has always been a gimmick of the system. There are so many men that's trapped into taking care of other men's babies solely because of the fact that the woman says, this is your child. But then when DNA test is taken and it comes back that he is not the child's father, then men, the court system, orders that man to still pay and be responsible for a child that is not his own. Now, men don't have the option to walk away. Men don't have that option to say, I'm not ready to be a father to a child. He is forced into supporting a child that maybe he really don't want. He was out there playing the field. He was playing the women. He got the women pregnant. Now you have this man that's trapped. His license are being suspended. His wages are being garnished. He's being thrown into jail. He's labeled as a deadbeat. And not only that, it shows up on his credit report. But women could go out and murder an unborn child and then tell you that you have no right to tell me what to do with that life that's inside my womb. You have no right to say that. You have no say in that. And if she chooses to keep the child, then she can keep that man in slavery, in captivity, until that child becomes an adult. And in many cases until after that child becomes an adult, that man is still paying for arrears. But I want to go to the scriptures briefly and give the scriptural perspective on men having the rights over men's bodies. Now, if you say that you are in Christ, if you say that you are, that you are saved and that you believe in the scriptures, then this applies to you. And that means that if you are a feminist, or if you say that you don't need a man, and that a man can't tell you what to do with your body, you are out of order. And I'm talking to the women as well as the men. The first scripture will be taken from the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, the third chapter reading the 16th verse. And it reads as follows. Unto the woman, he said. Now, this is what the Most High, the Creator, is saying to the woman 
at the beginning of the world, at the beginning of creation. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. You can go back and check this for yourself. I'll read that again. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Now, who's got a problem with that? This is what the Bible is saying. So, when you say men have no rights over a woman's body or what she should do with her body, you are out of order when it comes to the scriptures. The second scripture will, take it, will be taken from the 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, reading the third verse. And again, I'm keeping this very short. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of every woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Now this is the order that God had placed from the very beginning. I'll read that again. But I will have you to know that the head of every man is Christ. So even man has a head over him. Even man has a ruler over him. And it says, and the head of every woman, the head of every woman, the head of every woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. So that's the chain of command here on earth. I have one final scripture to read. And it's taken from the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter, reading the 22nd to the 24th verse. And it reads as follows. Wives, submit. Now I know there's a lot of women that don't like that word submit. They have the same spirit that Eve had in the beginning when she went outside of her husband and conversed with the serpent that gave her misguided information that caused the fall of mankind. But the scripture says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. So that means that even though some other man may tell you, I have knowledge to give you, I have wisdom to give you, this is how you should treat your husband, this is what you should do, you are out of order because you are now submitting yourself to another man outside of your husband. You are opening the gates to the serpent coming into your home. The same thing that happened with Eve in the beginning happens with you when you listen to other people, other men outside of your husband. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. So for those of you women that claim that you love the, the Lord so much that you will listen to him before you listen to your husband, especially if your husband is supposedly a righteous man, if he's telling you the right thing to do, then you are supposed to submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. And when you submit yourself to your own husband, then you are submitting yourself unto the Lord. But yet when you go in opposition against your husband and tell your husband how he has no rights over your body, then you are out of order and you are not submitted in submission to the Lord. The 23rd verse says, For the husband is the head 
of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. So that means that if your husband is the head of the wife, then that husband could tell that wife what to do with her body. He has authority over her body. She does not have authority over her own body, but her husband has authority over her body, just like she has authority over her husband's body. You see, so it's, it's balanced. It's equal. So women, when you say that a man can't tell you what to do with your body, you are out of divine order. The 24th and final verse says, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So that means that if your husband does not want you to get an abortion, if he's against that, then you cannot go against your husband. I don't care what the law says. You are out of line. Because your husband has more authority over you than the law does. As long as he's not abusive towards you. As long as he's not threatening your life. He has authority over your own body. So therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So women, no, you do not have rights over your own body. Your husband has rights over your body. So when you say a man can't tell you what to do, then you are out of divine order. So feedback, tell me what you think. Till next time. It's tight, but it's right.